So if the right of Christian initiation of adults is for the unbaptized, what do we do with those who have been baptized into other Christian traditions? We use a process called acceptance of baptized Christians into full communion. This is for persons who are validly baptized in another Christian community. So Anglicans, Methodists, Baptists, those who have been validly baptized but want to become Catholic. Now, we always presume the validity of the sacrament of baptism if someone says they have been baptized, unless we have reason to believe otherwise. So it's important to know what constitutes a valid baptism. In the Christian tradition, a valid baptism is uh, with the immersion or pouring of water three times with the formula, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If you use that form in those words, we consider that a valid baptism. Unfortunately, over the centuries, as the Christian family has fractured, not every Christian community has maintained that same formula. So there are some folks that we need to either investigate or we just know are invalid baptisms. So for instance, if you have someone coming into your parish who is coming from a Mennonite tradition, Pentecostals, the Seventh-day Adventists, Moravians, or many non-denominational communities, you're gonna to need to do a little bit of investigation to see how they were baptized, either by asking them if they're old enough to have remembered, or even calling the community that they came out of and asking how would this person have been baptized. On the other hand, there are some places that have invalid baptisms, such as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Oneness Pentecostals, the Salvation Army, and Unitarians. If you have someone coming from any of those traditions, we do not consider their baptisms valid, either because they use a different formula or because they don't intend to do what the church understands baptism to be. It's also important to, under, to know that if someone comes saying that, oh, I made an altar call or I said the sinner's prayer or something like that, that does not constitute baptism. Baptism is always a sacramental form with water and the proper words. If a person's baptism is determined to be invalid as you're doing your intake with them, then they would celebrate the rite of acceptance and become a catechumen. And so they would follow the RCIA process, not this process. So if you have someone with an invalid baptism, they are going to become a catechumen and go through the full RCIA process, as we've outlined in the previous video. It's important to note that the church makes a clear distinction between what we call candidates for full communion and catechumens, those who are unbaptized. The baptized are candidates, not converts. The term convert doesn't apply to them because they've already converted to faith in Jesus Christ through their valid baptism. In fact, the national statutes say the term convert should be reserved strictly for those converted from unbelief to Christian belief and never used for those baptized Christians who are received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. So we want to be very careful with our language there. And the reason is because the church wants to uphold the dignity of their baptism. We don't want to give the impression that we think their baptism is somehow lesser just because it wasn't in the Catholic tradition. We accept any valid baptism is truly a sacramental baptism, and so we have to uphold the dignity of that sacrament. Their status as baptized believers must also be respected. Again, the text says anything that would equate candidates for reception with those who are catechumens is to be absolutely avoided. This is why we don't celebrate the rites that are proper to catechumens with candidates. They don't do the minor exorcisms. They don't do blessings. They are not anointed with the oil of catechumens because they've already entered into the Christian faith. They are already baptized. So they do not participate in those rites. So what is required for reception into full communion? Well, unlike the RCIA, which talks about a fulsome process at least one year long with a full gamut of Christian formation, the RCIA says that for reception into full communion, the rite is so arranged that no greater burden than necessary is required for the establishment of communion and unity. And it says that the baptized Christian is to receive both doctrinal and spiritual formation adapted to individual pastoral requirements. In other words, the formation required for someone who's already baptized is going to vary from person to person. If you have someone who's been deeply involved in their faith and who just had a few questions about Catholicism, it may be a fairly abbreviated process and may not take very long at all before they're able to be received into the church. On the other hand, if you had someone who was baptized in another tradition, but then fell away from the faith at a young age and so doesn't know as much, they may require a much more fulsome formation process. They may even participate in some of the formation that the catechumens are. But again, that has to be determined when the person is brought in to see where they are at in their Christian journey and how much it's going to take to get this individual person ready to be received into the church. 
At the same time, the RCIA text also says we should avoid any sense of triumphalism. We shouldn't act as if we Catholics are somehow better or that our baptism are better than other ones. We're trying to be ecumenically sensitive here, you know, so we need to be careful not to act triumphalistic when we're bringing people into the faith. So we do the same intake as we do of other inquirers, again, establishing especially those two important questions, the validity of their baptism and investigating if there's any marriage issues necessary to take care of before they can be received into the church. Again, if necessary, the individual candidate may participate in the same formation process as catechumens, but would not participate in all of the rites that are proper to the order of the catechumens. The rites that are proper to these candidates are, first of all, confirmation and Eucharist. That is how they will be received into the church. And again, it can be celebrated whenever they're ready. There is no need to wait until the Easter vigil to bring someone into the church who has already been baptized. Ideally, it is done at a Sunday mass with the parish community present, and there's no need to, for the priest to ask permission from the bishop to confirm this person. Canon law gives the priest the right and the duty to confirm anyone that they bring into full communion with the Catholic Church, and so they don't need to ask permission. The only time a priest needs to ask permission to confirm someone is if they are asking to confirm someone who is baptized as a Catholic. But canon law says if a if a priest is bringing someone into full communion with the church, baptized or unbaptized, they have the right and duty to confirm. There are some optional rights that we can do with the candidates. Uh, there's the right of welcome, which is somewhat similar to the right of acceptance. It's simply a way of welcoming them into that formation process and introducing them to the community. And there's also the optional call to continuing conversion, which is done optionally during the rite of election at the cathedral with the bishop. This is simply an exhortation to the those already baptized to continue their process of conversion um, after their baptism towards Jesus Christ as they prepare to be received into the church. 